cool. How's it going, fellas? Devin here with Make Anything, as always. And today I've got a small but pretty neat project to share with you. So my family uses these little uh, key toppers to distinguish which keys belong to who. And while they get the job done, they kind of don't really... Whoop. They're kind of loose on there and they don't look so great. I think I could do better. So today I'm going to make some new key toppers. But here's the twist. I'm not just going to make some slip-on covers. No, I'm going to embed the key into my print. How am I going to do it? Well, just watch the video. That's, that's what this video is for. Just stick around and you're going to find out. This is the key that I'm going to be working with today. And I just want to take it off of its chain and stick it on an old school flatbed scanner. And what that does is scan in a perfectly sized image of the key. I can bring that into Illustrator and then draw a path around the key, which I will bring into SolidWorks to make this cover. So I'm just going to carefully outline the whole thing, and you can hold down shift to make those handles go perfectly vertical or horizontal. And I'm also going to want to outline this inner hole. Then I'm going to select one at a time and offset them in opposite directions. I'm offsetting both of them by 0.25 millimeters because I know that's a pretty good tolerance for my 3D printer to make fitting parts. I also draw this little circle which is going to make a sort of platform for me to rest my key on when I'm printing over it. So I'll select all those lines and export them as a DXF file so that I can bring them into SolidWorks. So I import that file, make sure the units are correct, and define the sketch origin somewhere around the center. And there we go. So now I can select that sketch and use this selected contours dialog to only select that inner outline which represents the actual dimensions of the key. And then I measured the key itself with my calipers and it was about 3.15 millimeters. So I'll make it that tall and then I'll also extrude a block for this bottom part of my key so I know what that'll look like. And yeah, this is just the reference that I'm going to build my cover around. But before I do that, I want to draw this little platform that I mentioned earlier. Basically, when I rest the key in the 3D printed part, I need it to be lying flat, so I need some kind of support on the end of the key as well as the handle where I'm going to be making the actual cover. So this is kind of just a support material for the key itself. Now that I've got that, I can do another sketch on the back here, and I'm going to figure out how I want my key cover to look. I draw some center lines between these two points and straight down from the midpoint, that way I have a proper center line, and I'll use that to mirror the sketch so that I only have to draw one half of it. So here I'm using a spline, and I'm just going to draw a few points first. It doesn't look right at all, but what you got to do is then select the line and move these handles around. So I'll kind of just keep working those handles until it looks all right. And I'll make this spacing about 2.2 millimeters away from the key. That way there's plenty of plastic in between. This inside hole I just wanted to be the same size as the hole itself. So I just converted that edge into a sketch. And then with the part that I sketched, I can use the mirror function to get the other half of the key cover. So there we go. Now I can extrude and I'm going to offset away from my key just a little bit so that they don't merge together. And I'm going to make it 1.2 millimeters thick just like that platform. At this point, I'm going to color my key differently so that I know it's not merged with my key cover. So now I can sketch the side walls that are going to be encompassing the key. And to do that, I'm going to use both the outline I created in Illustrator, and I'm also going to convert the entity of the bottom part that I made earlier. Then I can extrude and once again just select that side part to create the walls. I can use offset from surface to make sure that there's just enough height to fit the key. And that looks pretty nice. 
But at this point I realized that I'm probably going to want some kind of plastic wall on the inside of this hole as well, because that'll make it print a little easier. So I'm going to go back into my old sketch, and I'm just going to draw a circular hole right in the middle of that keyhole. This confuses SolidWorks a little bit, but if you just go back and edit each feature, you can select the correct surfaces again, and rebuild all your parts pretty quickly. So as you can see, I got that circular hole now, and then I'm just going to go through and fix it for the wall as well, and then I can do this top surface. I'll also make that 1.2 millimeters, and there we go. The key is completely covered. If I wanted to, I could print it out just like this, but I decided to chamfer these edges to make it look a little slimmer. Then, just because this is a 3D printer and we can do crazy stuff, I'm going to do a little design on the top of the key. Well, not only does it look cool, it's actually going to add some grip for the key as well. So I'm going to draw on this top surface and convert the edges and offset them as well. And then I thought it would be cool to just continue offsetting this center circle and then I could create a kind of ripple effect. So I did that over and over again until I covered that whole top surface. Then I selected the extrude feature and went in and selected all the little bits that I wanted to actually extrude. So it looks like our key cover is ready to export. So I'm going to select a face on this little platform as well as the key. I can tick that little select bodies button and that'll export only the parts that I want to actually print and not my reference. Alright, so I'm ready to print this out. And for my first test, I'm going to try using this flexible filament by Filament 1 to give the key cover a nice grippy feel. I was pretty happy with how fast I could print with this flexible filament. Normally when I print flexible stuff, it has to go really slowly. So this is pretty fast in my book. And here's the magic moment where I embed my key. All I had to do was pause the print right before it did that top layer. And on my printer, you can set it to pause automatically at a certain layer height. I actually set it to pause again just before it started doing that top grip design. That way I can have a cool two color print. So as you can see, I successfully embedded my key into this print. And while it's pretty cool, it's a little bit messy and I thought I could make it thinner as well. So I opened up SolidWorks again and I decided to bring these layers down to one millimeter. It's a very small difference, but when you're holding it in your hands, it can make a difference. As far as this top design, I like the idea, but I'm going to start over completely and do it a little bit differently. I am going to offset the lines again, but this time I'm going to do it by 1.2 millimeters instead of 0.7, and that thicker line will print out looking nicer. And instead of using the same offset for every ring here, I'm going to make it a little larger for each consecutive ring, that way it looks a little bit more like a ripple. And I made a few adjustments until it looked just right. And I also decided to put a fillet on these chamfers so that it's rounded. Since I already swapped out my filaments, I decided to just start this one yellow. And I also put a spritz of hairspray on the key. That way the filament would stick onto the key a little better. And that actually worked. Hairspray is pretty darn useful for getting 3D prints to stick to anything. Alright, here's the final print, and I am super happy with how it came out. I mean, compare this to what I was using before. It's no competition. These are way cooler. I hope you all enjoyed this little project. I thought it was super quick and fun, and I'm excited to do a lot more awesome stuff. So if I was able to 3D print around this key, you might imagine that I can embed just about any object as long as it has a flat top and bottom surface. Maybe even some other things. So I want you guys to leave comments and let me know if you have any ideas of other things I could embed in my prints. And hopefully we'll come up with some cool ideas. So I hope you're all subscribed and you'll stick around for all the cool things to come. Until then, I'm Devin.
This has been Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Little theme song I'm working on. Real creative. <laughs>